everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Last week, I showed you how you could take a whole bunch of your failed 3D prints and scraps and melt them down and turn it into something absolutely amazing, thanks to the help of a silicone mold. And if you haven't already seen that video, I'll have links to it up here in the corner, because this is the second half of the video where I'm actually gonna be showing you how I'm gonna create my own 3D printable mold box that we can then pour silicone directly into to create our own molds so that we can start melting down and creating some really creative, unique things. So to start things off, I'm gonna be taking something that I've designed myself in Nomad Sculpt on my iPad. You can basically do this with almost any design, but keep in mind one key fact with this that we're gonna to wanna to try and keep as simple as possible is to have one flat side of our model. And since my skull doesn't really have that, I'm gonna shave off one half of it and then cut off the front face as well to create two different unique designs. And once you have those files prepped and ready, what you can do is then start creating a mold box container that we're gonna run off in 3D print and then pour silicone into it. Now you could really do this in any app. I'm using Shaper 3D again on my iPad just because it's really easy and intuitive for me to use. And I'm basically just building some walls and perimeters around our model so that when we actually go and pour the silicone, it has something to actually contain it within it. Now, if you didn't wanna do a 3D printable mold box, you could completely do that. Just print your object and then create a standard mold casing wall thing that you could then pour silicone into. There's plenty of videos here on YouTube, but the whole reason why I wanted to do this was so that I could, if I needed to, recast this with silicone without having to worry about printing anything or building a mold box, I can just pour the silicone directly back into this case over and over again. And while I'm printing the files, I wanna say a big thank you to Elgoo for sponsoring today's video. I actually am running off and printing these models here directly on my Elgoo Neptune 3 Pro 3D printer at point two layer height and point one layer height to try and get the best details possible out of these 3D prints and the Neptune 3 Pro can exceed all of my expectations of creating some really smooth looking 3D prints with the proper setup. And if you're interested in picking up one of these 3D printers for yourself that I am so enjoying using, I'll have links to that down below where you can find more information about it over on Elegoo's website. I wanna say a big thank you again to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. Also, I know almost next to nothing about mold making. I'm gonna be using this Smooth On Umu 30. If you're interested in more information about mold making, which I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos around this because that's something that I'm in very, very interested in, especially when it comes to 3D printing and molding 3D prints. Robert Talone here on YouTube is an excellent resource and makes weekly videos about mold making. Highly recommend that, I'll link his channel down. Yeah, my, my bottle of smooth on, <laughs> this Umu 30 is, uh, it's completely solidified on the inside here. So I did some reading up online and it sounds like this, the shelf life of this has expired. I'm gonna end up returning it from the seller that I bought it from. I realized it wasn't purchased directly from smooth on. So that might explain why I have a really old stale version of the silicone. In the meantime, I have ordered some more that I'll be testing out with the official smooth on products. But in the meantime, I ran out to Joanne Fabrics and found this amazing mold maker silicone. But what I'm gonna do is again, it's just a one to one ratio here. So since we needed a little over six ounces of this, I figured I'd just pour three and three, mix it together and start pouring. So the next step is I'm supposed to actually mix these two together and then stir them up thoroughly for about 60 seconds to 90 seconds and then start pouring. However, first I need to get my mold release spray and spray our mold boxes because I wanna make sure that the silicone breaks freely from these 3D printed molds. Fingers crossed they don't actually leak or anything like that and will actually properly break free. All right, I'm slowly pouring this in, doing a high pour here to let it try and slowly fill up uh, all of the crevices of this 3D printed mold box. And hopefully this will help prevent a lot of the air bubbles that might come up if I just sort of uh, poured it and uh, all over the place here. So I'm just trying to do a steady pour until we can get this entire thing covered up. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need more of this mixture here for the rest of the molds, but we'll, we'll find out here in a second. 
So it's been 24 hours and my 3D printed mold boxes, the silicone that I poured inside them has fully cured. It's nice and stiff here on all three of these molds. So let's see about getting these demolded here. It's peeling out. Oh, this is looking clean. Oh, that is so satisfying to peel away from. And it's really clean looking. I am so impressed with how smooth this is just, this turned out amazing. Let's see if this one peels. If this one's, oh my gosh, it's already a little bit more difficult to get out of here. <laughs> that was a bit of a struggle to get that out, but it's coming. Oh, there we go. And this mold again looks pretty cool. And one thing that I'm actually liking is that you can see the print layer lines in this, even though I was printing at a really fine uh, 0.1 millimeter layer height, you can still see some of those uh, striation marks on the actual silicone mold. So this will be really fun to cast with. Hopefully it's a little bit easier than that smaller one since it's a little bit larger. Just a oh, perfect pull. Regardless of how this turns out, I'm very excited to see that my 3D printed mold boxes in fact worked. I didn't have to worry about the silicone seeping through and this smaller one here, uh, it did look like it was attempting. I think that's why it was so difficult to get through. It's just, it wasn't entirely solid, the top surface. So it was seeping through a little bit through the actual print, but I was still able to get it out. And the prints, I should say the, the molds from the prints look really nice and clean and very excited to actually get some things cast with these. Now I should be able to use, if I wanted to use the typical, uh, you know, the, the resins that you would typically work with when making molds or, or casts of molds. Uh, but again, we're gonna be attempting to take some of the leftover filament that I have from projects and melting that down inside of it. Let's start with this Uncle Jesse logo here. This was the quickest of the bunch here because it was just so shallow and it looks horrendous. <laughs> it looks kind of like a burnt potato chip. And I'm also realizing that I uh, inset this backwards. I was, yeah, just basically mirroring this, thinking that that was the way it would need to come out, but yeah, it's not. And I de definitely need to go back and revise the mold box here. I think I'm gonna redo this so that it has some, uh, like a background shape to it that I can mold into more easily, that it'll have like a more pronounced look to it. Also just having taller walls on the sides here. All right, here is the skull mold. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. It, again, lots of little divots and pockets in there from the small scraps of filament. I think I need to find a way to apply some more pressure to this as it's melting to help cover up those holes, but that's kind of a cool effect in itself. I don't know if I necessarily didn't have the oven up as high enough as I did with the original skulls. I left it a little bit lower this time around at like 380 and then bumped it up to 400. One other thing to keep in mind is that depending on the silicone that you're working with, it's gonna have different temperature ranges that it's gonna support. All right, let's give this a go. Uh, oh my goodness, it's hot. Oh my gosh, this is still really hot <laughs> compared to the other ones. So definitely a lot of little pockets and divots in there from the filament not fully melting all the way. Again, I think I just need to find a way to apply pressure to this while it's melting to really help knock out some of those air bubbles there. But overall, a really cool little way to use up some of your extra filament. And what's really exciting to me about this whole entire project is that it's, I feel like getting me a little bit more comfortable with the idea of creating silicone molds and then casting things from those molds. Not necessarily even melting down 3D prints, but just using your standard way of making casts from 3D prints. That is such a popular way to create duplicates of things that you might have designed and run off and printed versus doing print after print after print after print, especially like for someone like myself that enjoys making and selling things online. This is a great way to actually just crank out a whole bunch of these things very quickly. But let me know what you thought about creating your own 3D printable mold boxes and then creating silicone molds from those mold boxes and then even taking it a step further and creating either resin casts or just melting down more filament into those. This is just a really fun project. By the way, if you're interested in more information about my 3D printer settings, whether it's resin or FDM settings, you can find that over my Patreon. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos 
here on the interwebs. I also want to wish you all a happy new year's. I'll definitely be doing more three printing and mold making here in 2023. So you can expect a little bit more from this here in the future. Hey, thanks so much for watching y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye now.